Well, time now for the Joining Undercover Investigation, which reveals the existence of a militia group affiliated with the governing MPP operating in, a sec in secret from a state facility classified as a security zone. The revelation comes at a time when the president has repeatedly stated his commitment to rid the country of politically related violence in the wake of the Ayawasu West Wugong by-election, which culminated in the establishment of the Justice Short Commission. This documentary ever shows that amidst all the talk and commitment, a lesser-known MPP-affiliated militia group has been training and operating from an important state building classified as a security zone. Manasseh Azuria Wini spent months tracking the activities of this group. To the leaders of the two main political parties in our country, MPP and NDC, to bring an end to this worrying and unacceptable phenomenon of vigilantism. If we don't sit up, police, political parties, both NDC and MPP, civil society, those who know better, if we all don't sit up, 2020 and beyond will be something explosive. We call these things political vigilantism and we don't quite appreciate how bad. It is plain warlordism and they are malicious. On 31st January 2019, the attention of Ghanaians was on the Ayawasu West Wogon constituency in the national capital Accra. This is the most elite constituency in Ghana, home to the richest residential areas in the country and Ghana's premier university, the University of Ghana. The Member of Parliament for the area, Emmanuel Chamatin Ejakun, had passed and a by-election was being held to elect a new MP. The leading contenders were the National Democratic Congresses, the Lali Kwasi Brimpong, and the mistress of the late MP, Lydia Siriam Al Hassan, of the governing New Patriotic Party, MPP. What was expected to be a peaceful by-election turned violent a little over an hour after voting began. A group of armed and masked men stormed the constituency and clashed with some supporters of the NDC. It started from the residence of the NDC candidate and later spread to the Labaoleshi cluster of schools, which served as a polling station. The police on the ground said they did not know about the masked men. A member of parliament was assaulted. Some persons sustained gunshot wounds. Almost more than 50. Omuni na kitantu, two na omude, ene hamas. Ano na omude abu me apra mese. They shoot one of one of guys in leg, one of in, I mean in hand, and then one of that is a certain man to that what to be like. They shock in here. It's not small. The NDC pulled out of the by-election 
citing violence and insecurity. This by-election has been turned into a war zone. We cannot subject any of our members to danger because of elections. We have no option than to withdraw from the ongoing exercise. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. The nationwide outrage against the violence compelled the government to set up a commission of inquiry to investigate what happened at Ayawasu West Wogon. My Lord, there is a very good bond between... Even before the commission finishes its work and submits its recommendations, the general cause of the violence appears to be obvious. Clashes involving violent political party facts popularly called vigilante groups have become a ritual in the political space. Three weeks before the Ayawasu West were gone by election, Commissioner of Police Nathan Kofi Buachi warned that if political vigilantism was not dealt with seriously, there would be serious implications for the 2020 election. If we don't sit up, police, political parties, both NDC and MPP, civil society, those who know better, if we all don't sit up, 2020 and beyond will be something explosive and it can be something that will not be able to contain. A member of the Ayawasu West Wogon Commission of Inquiry and criminal law lecturer of the University of Ghana, Professor Henry Tamensa Bonsu said the facts should not be called vigilante groups. We call these things political vigilantism and we don't quite appreciate how bad. It is plain warlordism. And they are malicious. They are not political vigilantes. They are malicious. And so it gives me concern if you are responsible for internal security and they are malicious operating all over and they are private militias subject to some people's control. Those people are warlords. I want to use the platform of this message to make a sincere, personal, net appeal to the leaders of the two main political parties in our country, MPP and NDC, to come together as soon as possible, preferably next week, to agree on appropriate measures to bring an end to this worrying and unacceptable phenomenon of vigilantism in our body politics. <laughs> Joy News investigation, however, reveals there is a militia group within the MPP which appears to have the backing of the government. Make no mistake, this is not a state security agency and this is not a private facility. This is the Christian Bok Castle, popularly called the Osu Castle in Accra. And this is the training ground and headquarters of the I group, a militia group affiliated to the governing MPP. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. Until 2013, the Osu Castle was the seat of government. Currently, it is the annex to the seat of government, the Jubilee House. Four ministers of state at the office of the president are housed here. The commission on the creation of the new regions had their meetings here. And the commission of inquiry into the Ayawasu West Wogon election violence also holds sittings here. But this is where the I group, a militia group affiliated with the MPP, has been operating from in the past two years when this government took office. One, two, three, one. The commander of this group is Nana Reko Ado, popularly known as Choman. Choman is a former personal bodyguard of the President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Joy News investigation has revealed that the group has two offices in this building, one as the secretariat of the group and another 
as the office of the commander. When Joy News contacted the presidency on this story, the director of communications at the office of the president, Eugene Ahi, gave the following response. The president has no knowledge of the alleged activities of this said group, let alone sanction the activities. My checks from national security have revealed that no such group is operating from the castle. Despite this denial, the group does not conceal where it operates from. On its website, theigroup.com, the iGroup describes itself as a security company whose personnel are trained by retired military officers. It has its motto as vigilance and protection. Christian Bok Osu Castle is its address on the website. The Ministry of Interior, which licenses private security agencies, has told Joy News the I Group is not licensed to provide any security services. Sources within the group, however, say the I Group undertakes security operations in and out of Accra. A private legal practitioner, Martin Kwebu says it is an offense to operate a security group without any license from the Interior Ministry. Once your checks have revealed that this I vigilante is not registered, yet they are providing the services, then, I mean, unless there are any other facts that we are not aware of, it means that there is a breach of the law and it comes with very serious consequences. If a person both for the persons employed as the security guards and also for the organizations. Regulation 14 makes it an offense for people or a person to work for an unregistered security organization and also for the organization itself to provide security services when it's not been duly registered. And so Regulation 15 says that in that case, if the person is found guilty, so it means that after this, if you make a report and the police also investigate and confirm what you've already investigated, they want to prosecute, they are facing a fine and up to one year imprisonment. Mr. Dumbo has started speaking. On December 7, 2018, the NPP held a ceremony at the Accra International Conference Center to celebrate the legacy and launch the foundation of one of the founding members of the party's ideology. Simon Dombo. The program was attended by almost everyone who matters in the MPP, including former President John Ejikum Kufo, Vice President Dr. Mohamedou Baumia and his wife Samira. President Ekufuado was the special guest of honor. We are met here this evening to commemorate the life of an extraordinary Ghanaian, a nationalist, selfless patriot, revered chief, eminent statesman, and one of the three founders of the Dankwa Domo Buzia political tradition, which gave birth to the new patriotic party, the ruling party in Ghana. A number of ministers of state attended this program. The I group provided security at the Accra International Conference Center. They manned the gate to the conference center and were everywhere including the main entrances to the conference hall. Members of the group were informed of this event three days earlier. On the day, as on any other day, participants were not searched. Our investigation team was with the group the whole day and followed them to the conference center. Members of the militia group who attended this event were about 400. Those who did not take part in security operations served as audience. Monday, December 10, 2018 was the first meeting of the group after the conference center event. That morning, Fraser Ureku Keja, one of the leaders of the I group who is referred to as the chief of staff, addressed members of the militia group. He told them President Ekufuado had asked about the group at the conference center. President, I'm going to walk first. 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 I'm going to walk first
Join new sources within the group say the National Security Ministry is aware about the operations of the group at the castle. Sources within the I group told join news the National Security Operations Director, Colonel Michael Opoku, had attempted to stop the group from operating from the castle on a number of occasions but failed. At one of the meetings in 2018, Nana Rekun had told members of the group that the National Security Secretariat had tried to undermine the group and had often sent spies to find fault with their operations at the Osu Castle. I want to put over now, so I need you. Now, I'm a president. Eh? I want to put over now, you know. You can tell me where they're going. I don't care. You can't put it down, you know. You can't put it down, you know. A research conducted as part of this investigation reveals this group existed before Ekufadu won power. In June 2012, a Daily Guide publication headlined Vigilante Group Vows to Protect Ballot said the I group had been formed by Choman, Nane Ekufadu's bodyguard. The story said, and I quote, the I Vigilante Group is made up of energetic men and female MPP members across the country whose primary target is to protect MPP members against any attacks by lawless people. End of quote. 2018, the chief of staff of the group, Frieza Oreku Keja, told TV3 in an interview that the group had a membership of over 5,000 youth. The I group is, is all over the, the, the 10, 10 regions of this country. And we over 5,000 members in Kriabuli every day. You understand? And the I group is made up of youth of this country that believes in the ideas and the policies of Nana Adrodanqua's government. Leaders of the group say they facilitated the drafting of members of the group into the security agencies and helped them get jobs. <laughs> Both the commander and chief of staff of the group have on different occasions 
warned members of the group against acts of lawlessness. But it appears some of them are often engaged in criminal acts and have often had brushes with the law. Here is their chief of staff in one of their meetings. <laughs> <laughs> On another occasion, one of the trainers congratulated the group because no member of the group had been arrested that weekend. The I group is divided into four units. The Alpha, Charlie, Delta and the Special Unit. They meet on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Sometimes there are up to 400 of them in the castle. They wear black suits and white shirts. It appears a number of top government officials and ministers in the Kufadu's government know about this group and its operations at the castle. But those we have contacted decline to comment on the matter. The castle is still a security zone and cameras are not allowed here. This means the hundreds of vigilante or party militia groups cannot operate here without a clearance from top government officials. The National Security Ministry and the National Security Secretariat know about this group because the castle is currently protected by operatives of the National Security Council and the police. Vehicles at the Presidency and others also refuel at a station outside the Osu Castle where the group operates. The group's weekly activities in the castle are open, often between 7 a.m. and 12 noon, and they go there in their hundreds. Father, as we have gathered here, we have gathered as one family under the MPP family. We pray and commit the president into your hands, the vice president, and our commander, Truman, and all his lieutenants in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We commit all... The... On 21st December 2018, which happened to be the last meeting of the group in the year, there was a get-together at the castle where loud music entertained hundreds of members of the group deep into the night. Joy News has tried on several occasions to speak to Nana Rekwon Ado, the commander of the group, but he has not availed himself after initially agreeing to a meeting. Apart from using the garden of the castle for training, the I group and its leader have two offices in this important state building. The question is, who gave them this building and who at the top intervened when the National Security Ministry drove them out of the castle. For Joy News, Manasseh Azore Arena reporting. So there you have it, the militia in the heart of the nation. But here at Joy News, we maintain our stance that we disband party militias now. My name is Israel Lyon, and that'll be it for Join News Prime for tonight.